The next morning, Nathan wakes up at Yama's house covered in bandages all feeling dizzy and his body aching all over. Oh! You awake! Thank goodness! Yama called out as she was bringing in some food for Nathan to eat. Nathan spoke weakly, Yama? What happened? Why is my body hurt so much? During the time, Yama told Nathan that Marcus was dead and what Lance and Oliver found after his murder, two axes on his head and Marcus's arm in the kitchen but there's no sign of his other arm. Nathan was in disbelief and despair of losing the last Hellermanop member who cares about him and the only members left alive is Lance and Oliver. While telling Yama what really happened Lance and Oliver enters the house to question Nathan since Nathan was the only one who knew what happened last night. Nathan told the two of them what really happened and who the killer really is, but Lance and Oliver give him suspicious and untrusting looks thinking Nathan was trying to lie his way out or just overreacting he was talking about some stories or nonsense when a member of their team is dead. After a while, Nathan was released from questioning, even though his confession was fully dismissed. Hours later Nathan was on his way back to the cave until he heard footsteps behind him and he stopped, footsteps did the same. It was the black figure again that killed Marcus and the others, Nathan starts walking again but a bit faster this time the footstep behind him did the same again. Nathan now scared, kept walking faster every few seconds to quickly get to safely as the footsteps also kept going faster causing Nathan to finally run for his life hoping to lose killer who was after him. After running for a while, Nathan was cornered at the same graveyard where Gustav's murder had occurred earlier. The killer stops a few feet away from Nathan, pulls out their knife, then walks slowly towards him. Nathan was frozen in fear, but then after remembering many bad times of the FRICK incident, Felix's revenge, and the murder spree at the present time, he suddenly felt his fear and pain fading away and only guilt and acceptance rushed over him. Lost in thought, he walked up to the killer, looked up into the killer's face directly into their eyeless eyes, then almost whispered I think I know why you are doing it. Hearing what he said, the killer puts their knife away, curious to hear what their soon-to-be victim was going to say. Nathan continued it's because of me, is it? I made the wrong choice, is this the price I can pay? The killer replied act to Ali, th error e no puni sh me and yes or p recess why you had to p a, I am Pilar N N ing S R Met Hyung Mori T H N T H at. After hearing what the killer said, Nathan kinda got confused about what sort of plan what the murder is going to do. P planning W what? Nathan asked. The killer answered, I am a not T L Y U ever, but it's B T T or to C F or Y O or C L F. After hearing that, Nathan had no choice but to explain about what he has been through before the murder spree happened. And to his surprise, the killer gave him a choice to choose one part to trade before dying, Nathan decides he should trade his heart since he feels like dying in a little less gruesome way. After saying his last words which is I'm sorry, that I didn't know or remembered why you hurt us in the first place, I wish I can choose better. Nathan finally accepted his death with open arms, and the killer uses their pointy claws to stab him into his chest killing him and ending his traumatic pain. The killer felt something that they needed inside of Nathan's chest, pulled his heart out like they were gutting a fish, then puts it away to keep it. The killer sets Nathan's corpse down right next to Felix's grave then left. The next morning, Nathan's body was found by Alvin who's about to visit his two friends' graves, and he has to report the body right away. As everyone who's still alive was here, they noticed that there's no sign of Lance or Oliver. Some of the letters tried to phone any of them, but there's no answer. Thinking there's something strange about why they didn't come to see the body, Alvin and some others break inside the LMNOP headquarters to search for Lance and Oliver. They soon found them still on their beds and after waking them up a few times but getting no response and checking on them, they all found out that Lance and Oliver died in their sleep and their cause of death was a lethal injection. Both of their bedroom windows were open, and it was confirmed that after or before Nathan's death, the killer went to headquarters then snuck their way into Lance's room quietly enough to kill the two of them one by one without waking them, then snuck back outside using Oliver's window. Each hero held half of a paper that tripped in half, and when put together, it spelled a word D-R-R-O-R -R written on it. After the investigation and still nothing turned out clear. 
Quinn was researching the past murder cases to find more clues of each scene then said I wonder what's gonna happen if we don't solve this case. The next night while Quinn was taking a slow night walk in the forest, everything was fine until he spots a light from far away. Ten minutes later while hiding in the bushes, Quinn saw something that horrifies him to the bone. It was the murderer again chanting at an empty spot of the forest. The bloody circle with a pentagram slash five-pointed star on the center was painted with blood on the ground, and some body parts that terrified Quinn the most were placed on all five star points while one of them's was on the middle, the body parts was the killer collected were Marcus's left arm, Gustav and Nathan's hearts, Uriel's right side of his head, Roy's eye and on middle of the star lay Theodore's lifeless head. After the killer finishes their chanting, the candle's flame surrounding the circle went out. The night sky turned red and killer starts laughing like there was the inner joker inside of them. It is Duny. My ritual is co a. The killer cried in joy and madness, Quinn was paralyzed in fear and didn't think about moving knowing how slow he is when he tried to run that is when heard rumbling noises, from above. Quinn looked up, and saw a huge red meteor crashing the sky and as it touches the ground, Planet Z was destroyed and was cracked into pieces and everyone who there including Quinn and even the killer were all dead in near seconds. There were no survivors left of Z's remains at space, it may look like the end of this story. But no, it ended up becoming more than that, killer's plan are nearly finished and something else is happening. After Planet Z was destroyed by the Red Meteor, something else is happening, something big, something that what the figure planned after death. The huge cross that the figure and the red meteor had started, got activated. First the red and black energy surrounds Z's remains causing them to move like there's a raging tornado. As planet Z's broken parts was all put together again, Z's eyes turned black with glowing red pupils and became bloody. His teeth grew sharp and his gems turned blood red. Then it all went quiet, planet Z has become an E.X.E, as the sky at space turned dark red and sun turned pitch black. In the process, all of the letters who died in Planet Z were also back to life even Felix himself and the five letters he had killed were all cursed with hunger for blood and a big death game alphabet bore error. After that, they all became exes on the internet like Ben Drowned, Sonic EXE or other exes on the internet. When they choice which victim in love with video games or their community, they will interrupt them telling they had entered ag era and only way to escape it is to wait for 24 hours for it to be over without turning off or closing the computer at all. But if a player did turn off or close the computer when they're not supposed to, they'll be greeted with a message on the screen. Hello, do you want to play with US? If so or not, let game begin now. There's no escape or turn back from it, even the power off button was no longer useful when in a problem like this, and all the player has to do after disregarding the NO turning off or closing the computer warning, is to play 26 minigames from normal to hard to impossible minigames they only have 10 lives and if they failed the minigame, they lose a life, and if all lives were lost, it's game over. If the player wins all 26 minigames they'll get an extra chance to wait for 3 minutes until the event is over for good, without turning off or closing the computer. If they did wait for 3 minutes they will be left alone to rest and the event is over but if they do turn off or close the computer their computer was destroyed for good. However, the letters does make a game more harsher for players who are bad users. If they win either at beginning or the extra chance, they will most likely get all bad darkest secrets relieved to anyone they don't want to talk to them about, but if they fail and their computer was ruined, the letters will appear and the bad user will never be seen ever again and the secret message on the ruined screen appear and said now you know all of our ABCs, we have become a nightmare no one ever finds or heard about this message at all after the disappearance of the bad player, but as has remained a mystery cause it is never heard but sometimes widely assumed.